Hi everyone, how are we? Uh, and never will work in wisdom. Sorry, this, this looks very negative, doesn't it? All my arms crossed, but we've had an email from one of one of our regular viewers who, who sent in an email with cardboard cutouts, and I'm doing Greek dancing like this. So I'm a bit embarrassed by this. So I'm trying to keep my arms crowded. Ben sat here laughing because he, he's seen these pictures and thinks it's quite funny. Um, it's not fair, really, is it? Okay, so today we're going to do something that's based around little care. But when I did the work holding session, if you haven't watched it, go back through the videos. Did it as two part thing, worked holding on the live, had a few suggestions of could we design a project that we use some of these features in? So oh, this is it. Okay, my little car. Um, bit of fun. But I wanted to do this totally on the live. A little bit different. I've seen others sort of on YouTube and Facebook at the moment. So I'm trying to make it just a little bit different. So that's our aim for this afternoon, little car. Now, initially when I started this, was trying to figure out a way of making the body. It's not round. It's an oval shape at the front, round at the back. So we can do that. We're going to do that this afternoon quite easily. So I planned out. And these sessions take a little bit of planning. You'd be shocked. And we can spend a couple of days planning out to do what we're going to try and compact into an hour. So enough talk. So my first bit I did, I started playing around with a size of the body. So I have this. I plane the wood up so it is square because actually you need to draw some holes. I've labelled top so I know where things are. You won't see this totally clearly on there. I've got a pencil line down here. The top also indicates the front line there. On the end here, this is more important. I'm just going to grab the pencil. I've got a centre line that tells me the middle. So we've marked the centre dot of the blank. Let's come back a little bit. There you are. So dot there. That's the middle of the blank. It's the same the other end. Okay, give you the sizes of the blank in a minute. I've also then got another mark 10 mil up and 10 mil down from it. So they are lined up with the centre line, but 10 mil from the middle. That's the front of the car. The back of the car, we have centre, 10 mil down, 6 mil up. Now the 10 mil down is on the underside of the car where the axles are. I'll turn it around to here. I've got my axle positions down on here and I'll give you the measurements. This is 15 mil down, 10 mil. So the back is a little bit lower towards the bottom. I have done it as a drawing, drawn up sheet and Ben did say to me later, we'll, we'll scan it and we'll put it on so you can guys can have a look. So I can turn it around a little bit there. And then it labels the positions. The blank is 165 millimeters long. I got 48 mil square when I machined it up. The reason I wanted it square, I needed to drill the holes. So let's get our blank we're going to play with. So we have our block here. I've drilled these two holes. They are 16 mil diameter. We used short pattern forstner, less wobble. And the reason we've gone 16 mil, I want to be able to use 16 mil down that will push straight into that. Nice, accurate and secure. Okay. Hopefully, I haven't danced over that too much. You can all understand that, okay? So the blank, like we said, is 48 mil square. The axle for the back is 52 mil from the back, 28 on the front one. But like I said, we'll try and get that drawing put on, then you can have a look. We're going to turn this on the ring centers. We regularly use these in here. Uh, my favorite centers to go with. And you're going to see this afternoon, one of the reasons I really like these. So they're in front of the car. It's going to go on the drive centre. Just getting the brattle, because I want to dot mark each of those points. So I've got a location that the centre point, done those ones, look, will drop into on the ring centres. So front, going to go into there. So by doing that little drop, or a little dent in the center, I can move it there and it will drop into that location. Makes it a bit easier. Tail stop, we're just going to locate, get in position. Again, doing the same thing, wiggling that about, just trying to find that location. That looks good. Tighten it up. Tool rest. We want something long enough to cope with this. Checking my position, so make sure things look central. They look good. Live on. 
nice and tight. We're going to go with spindle wrapping gouge. Handle down low, finger underneath, just the bubble to start with. No shaving, gently bring the handle up. Push along. Deliberately start it in the middle. It's going to go along. Just going to take this down to a nice clean cylinder. So our shaving is starting to get longer. We've got to be quite light pressured in certain places, not too much weight. So push where the axle holes are. Want to make sure I'm not pushing too hard. The chisel will drop in because we have that hole. So I can definitely feel those little holes when I come over. I want a diameter. So I'm going to cheat, I'm going to measure my car I've got. I want to take it down to the diameter. A little bit more to go. So a quick look. Just over. You can see the material getting thinner on these holes. So we've got to cut through a little bit. Have a quick look there that's close a little bit we're going to take a bit more off in a minute so first we're down to a nice clean cylinder now we set about all those positions front and back so front edge i've got the holes either side so i've labeled one is the middle two three okay now on this stage i can go back to my bit of paper just to try and memorize what i did so front edge with there, we're going to come to these two on the front. So on there, one there. So I'm going to move it off centre onto that 10 mil drop, but locating on the centre one on the back, the one we've just already used. I can find the mark again. Oh, over a bit too much. There it is. That one looks too high, but let's just double check. They say measure once, cut twice, isn't it? Okay. So we're going to go off there. Let's just spin that up just so you can see it's off centre very slightly. Ben, what have you got? So I've got a question here from Maurice about um, nesting tables. He's saying um, he's broke the tenons. Would he be able to fix that with a dowel? So he's adding nested tables like you'd have in your lounge, so you get them out. Depends on how you've broken the tenon. But yes, you could possibly drill some dowels. If you can get it apart, yes, you could put some dowels. Other ways that I've done in the past, things like that, maybe a steel pin. So something like some threaded rod and some epoxy. That's more strength again, so you can use that to bond the two together. The major thing you've got to be able to get it apart to get into where that joint is to, to if you like, rebuild it some way or another. So be it a metal pin, you could even, as you say, put some dowel in. You could possibly rebuild the tenon. If you broke the tenon off flush with where it joins the table, maybe you could cut, as you kind of saying, with a dowel, cut a tenon, put it into the rail, and then extend the tenon into the lug. But yes, you should be able to either do maybe a dowel, metal pin would be good. All right, Ben? And also from Maria in Wales, um, a big... Hiya, Maria. Sorry, we've missed you. I did notice you weren't in for a few days, so I hope you're well. Sorry, so, Dad. a big thank you to you, Jason, for championing the um, the One Morse taper. Have you noticed? Wow, <laughs> yeah. okay. Um, so, this thing's going back into stock, all right? So, all I need you all to do, though, if you have a One Morse taper live, you want these done, make sure you buy them, okay? <laughs> they come out my wages, these things, if you don't... No, sorry. Okay, so... Right, okay, so back to a bit. We've moved it off centre, all right? Now, we don't want to skim the whole length of this. So I'm going to draw myself a pencil line 
And the beauty of this little car, nothing's precise. Got a pencil line there, right up here. Gonna start down here. We're just taking off the high spots. How far do we need to go? A little bit more. Now, just gonna bounce around right up to the other end. And I'm gonna come, can't quite see it. Let's just see if I can go back to there. We've got ring here. I need to do the other one up on here. This is the side we've just cut. So I'm just gonna put that onto there. Gonna press it into that. So I've moved off to the other mark as well now. And I did say we don't need a lot. Now I want those ring centre marks that I'm biting into now as a guide of how much material I need to take off. And again, we're using that same pencil line. Quick guide, let's have a look. Looking in on the end here, so I've just got, which is good. Bring it back. Just trying to draw around that circle. One there. One there. Got to take a bit more of this side so I can put it back on mm. to there. That's going to give us the, if you like, oval body shape. Tiny little bit more of this one. So what I'm lining up for is the edge where the ring center mark is and it compresses in, just as a quick guide. That's not bad. Loading back in from there. So we're now back on center. Gonna put the extractor on, gonna get a little bit of a brazier. So we want some 150 grit. Take the tool rest out, give us more access. Want something flat to hold. We've got a bit of plywood. Making the lathe nice and high speed for this. I want to send him round. Now I'm going to drop the speed down a bit more. Not too much. That's better. We can drift over that shape. We should blend that all together. That's our one five, a little bit more. So now I'm going slower to blend in. Coming back along, seems early to sand it, but I want to get that bit while we've got maximum shape out the holding mark on the tailstock end, really. You might want to do just a little bit on there. Okay, we're chilling the noise up, just going to take this out, so we can now see on the front end, that lovely oval shape, round on the back. Okay, then let me just do that one on there, and uh, got to have a look at my bit, a little bit of paper, memorise where we were, so four is in there and centre, so that's that. Thor is right down there. So on the tailstock end now, I'm coming down to the lower one, which is 10 mil off of the centre point. So look, where's that going to cut? That's good. Just see where we are. Just going to set things back up. I know Ben's sat here waiting with another question, so I'm just trying to get things set so we can have a look at what he's got. Okay, Ben, sorry. Sorry, I think you just answered it. Um, was it a 10 mil offset on the on the front? So on the front ones, and this is the difficult bit really to understand in the front and the back. Let's go to the other block because I think it's clear. Yep. So front end down here, 10 mil. So center point, 10 mil either side, up and down. This will be the top of the car that wheel axes are down here. So your 10 mil is either side of there. On the back, center. The one I've now gone to is 10 mil lower, and that's down towards the wheel axis. So that's the one here now. It's on centre on the drive end. And yeah, I know. All right, okay. All right. So, 
Put a little bit of a mark. Where's our, our wheel axis is there? Gonna go to about there, I think. So just draw another line. And that's it. Nothing has to be set in stone on this. We can turn it over by hand. If you were worried about thinking about where you're cutting, pencil's a great way. Just hold it still on the tool rest. Create a little line. Okay, Ben, before I get going again. So a question from Fuller. Um, he saw that the calipers have sharp points. Um, will they dig in when used in the spindles turning? They can do. Um, it depends on what you've got. So something like the ring calipers I've used, these aren't dead sharp on the edge. And it can be worth occasionally, if you're worried about how sharp they are, you can radius the tips, you can soften the edge just a little bit. And diamond file or abrasive paper can be really good for that just to soften that edge so they're not as sharp can be good. So you're using them to get a measurement. As you say, you don't want them being razor sharp. Certainly when they're factory done, they reckon they do them on a linisher. And they're quite quickly done, I would have thought. If you go other end of the scale, something like your dividers, they want to be sharp. I'd use a diamond file sharp the inside of the leg. Bring it round so you get them back to a nice sharp point. That can be good. All right. On some of my dividers at home, I will actually have one sharpened point and one blunt. So I can rest the blunt one on the end of the object and the sharpened one to create the line. So little things to think about. All right. So we're going to do the cut pick area, if you like, the car now. Take the speed up again. So I want a little bit out there, a bit more speed. So we're running about oh, 1600 on here. And again, we're using that large spindle wrapping gouge, nice and lightly. I'm abiding by spindle work tools, larger to smaller. Gonna have a look. Difficult to see what's going on when we're cutting. So we're cutting this hollow out. We want a little bit more. So handle down low when I start. I can rest the bevel, gently come up. Down to there. Now, if I use the tool a little bit more on the side, I can use it like a really large spindle gouge. Roll it as I get near the bottom. Come the other way. Want a bit more out here. We're coming down. Trying to get the curve to meet together nicely. That gives us our curve there. Tiny bit. Okay, let the lathe get back up to speed. Blend that together. And again, whilst drop centre at that point now, just going to sand that in. So we'll put the air back on, get the extractor going. I can kill the abrasive, so I'll bent it, holding the bent bit, bow pan, using that loop bit. Work that shape. Have a quick look to what's going on. Not too bad, a little bit nearer the front. I just want to get. And again, most important bit with us supporting with both hands, not pushing too hard. I don't want to round off the Christmas. Should get a nice shape, tiny little lip there that I've left. Look, might be a go back with the chisel. That's off. So now we're going to go to the six mil. And just check there. Six is on there. Yep. So this is the one that's higher than the center point on the tailstock end. And we are central point on the drive end. I might. I don't know if it'll cause me any aggro. It would look nicer. Just want to do a little bit of alteration. I don't want this. So I don't want this solid block in here. So we can take a little bit of diameter off. So I've gone back to centre. Very lightly. Cross there. 
blended in. Don't want to come too far down the main body. Just want to slacken that out a little bit. Tiny bit more. And this is just, um, that's why I can describe this personal taste. Why do I say that? I want the axles to show when I've done them. Part of the beauty of the design of how I did this. So I'm just going to sound that in. Blend it into our oval. Should be good. And then we're going to go back up to the top one, which is six mil off up there. Again, I've got to look at where this is moved off centre again now. Where it's going to cut. This is going to hit the bottom more. I want bowl gouge. Going to start right in the corner. We're going to create a curve. So I rust the barrel. Gently come up there and let's have a look, see what we're getting. So we get this curve shape. Quite nice. A little bit more maybe. And again, you can play around with shapes. It's quite interesting to think about, and I was thinking about this the other day with design this. It'll be interesting to see what you all come up with as a finished car. I'd love to see your pictures. A little bit more of a curve in round here. Just going to bring that up. Okay, bam. Um, so I've got a question here from Fuller. Um, he's talking about using a slide rule, um, machinist calipers. Um, he sees them used to scribe circles for chucks. Um, but the, is that an abuse of the tool? Sorry, can you repeat the? I've not heard of a slide rule machinist caliper. Okay. Ooh. It sounds a bit engineering to me, a bit metalworking. Oh, go careful. Um, we use a little DAT gauge, which is almost like a sliding roll. I haven't got one on here, but Ben, there might be one behind you on the magnet rack. But okay, so we use a DAT gauge, but that's more of a DAT gauge. Um, the sliding rule is this to find the centers. Um, he sees them being used to scribe circles for chucks. Okay, um, you can, I guess a bit like the speed um, you can use your sliding ruler with the bevel and you can use the 45 or the 90 degree corner of ruler. If it's down for the middle, you can use that as a, a scribe line. Yes, that would work. Oh, like know. a vernier caliper. Oh, a vernier. Yeah. So, oh, know. I see. What, yeah, so marking, using okay. that to score I've never the thought bit of timber. That. You can, okay, maybe. Going to use a few things like that. Right, we've got the back end done. Right, okay. Got to sound that curve. Again, working with both. Not too much pressure into the abrasive for your force it to drift. Trying to keep our accurately cut bit. So this is same abrasive, and we want. Bit too forty. Okay. I think that looks good. Quite an elaborate shape now, isn't it? I don't know if you can really so get there. So which one do you want? But let's have a look on two, I think. Look at there. Front edge, nice oval shape. Back is actually round. We've got a long curve that comes up here. Wheel holes, you can see where I wanted that. All right, hopefully that shows. Quite a lot of shape. Few other things you still got to do. Got to drill a hole in here, got to drill some holes. So at the moment, I'm going to leave it like that. Don't go cutting these off yet. We've got a little bit of finishing off on the front to do as well. But if we do that now, sorry, Dan. Sorry. Right, if we do that now, we've got no way of putting it back on the road. So at the moment, your holding marks are there. They're quite important. Okay. Oh, 
We now need to obviously make a couple of things to go on the car. I time now to decide. I think what we're going to do, do the wheel first. Can't have a car without wheels, can you? So when we did the work holding session, I'm quite good at adapting my lathe to do other things. So, Chuck, now we had this is a question last week, and I missed one of the questions of how do you stop cross threading when you put your chuck on the lathe? If you've got handle here, fantastic on the outboard that you can spin it, you've got somewhere rotating, it makes life easier to grip. If not, if you have a spanner fitting, put that in or lock the spindle. So you're not fighting against trying to do those things. On here, hold the chuck and support it. You're going bowling if you like. Okay, get your hand in underneath. They can be quite heavy. Get your initial stage loaded. You'll find there's a registration point probably with no thread. Not all chucks. Uh, my live at home, one of them has a thread all the way up through. So I have to be careful. I can load it onto there. Get that initial weight bit. Then you can either turn against that lock spindle. So I could lock the, the pin in here. Let's do that because a few are going to say I don't have a hand wheel. Onto there. Put it in. Twist it. Don't force it. If it won't go, you've done something wrong. Things definitely not to do. Take the pin out and start the lathe when you're halfway and wind it on because, yes, you'll probably get it stuck. Try and make sure it's wound all the way back against the register. We said about that nylon washer last week. That's a good way. Other major thing which I thought about when I read this, only put the chuck on the lathe. So in other words, if you turned your big fruit bowl or you've got your hollow pot and you've got that and you've secured it to the chuck to test it fits, don't go trying to hold all of it and put it on in one heavy go. Be sure then supporting the weight of the pot, the bowl, whatever else, and the chuck becomes more problematic. Right, our wheels. We've got our sea jaws by metal hull saw. Really use quite a few of these to do. Right? I don't like using the arbors because they wobble about too much. They've got too much slop on those pins. Throw that into there. We then want multi-head centre. I've had one there. Now, multi head center has a collar that goes on here, screws on, and you can put different center points into it. All right, so I've taken the center points off and I've also taken the collar off. It leaves a three quarter 16 thread that I'm going to put in the tailstock. On my funny board, I've got hold of I have a 50 mil faceplate with three quarter 16 thread. So, in other words, that will screw on to my center. Nice and easy. Down here, I have a clamp that fits on a pillar drill type table. Next thing I do, just load the tool rest back in place. I'm going to have my cars going to have plywood wheels. Why? I think they look nice. I like the use of plywood for this. It makes it easy, nice equal thickness, easy to do. So my workpiece at the moment, I've got the plywood I've just loaded in. I don't know, Ben, if you can have a look on the overhead. Let's have a look on free. Down in here, there it is. Just in there, oh, my fingertip is. I've got this clamp. I can do it up. Something to secure the workpiece in here. And then I can back that off just a little bit. So I was using the pressure between the headstock and the tailstock just to hold everything nicely. The tool rest lines up to keep everything parallel. So that's right out where my hands are here and stop anything spinning. Next important thing, lathe speed, slow. Don't want too much speed. Okay. And all we're going to do is gently line that forward. Just about through. There we go. All right. So let's just bring this back and take this off. That's where it's held nicely. I can unclamp it. Um, I'm going to be sneaky with my car because we're only going to do one wheel with you. How many do you need to see me make? So I've already done the others. We then want a little bit there. I can just tap that out. Okay. So I've used the dowel in behind. Little block, tap it out. On my way down, let me just do, and then we'll do you. Look. Okay. That one there. Get ready for the next bit. Going to wind the tail stop back. We can use the self ejection pin in here. Just pushed it out. I could have used a knockout bar, but it's going to lead nicely to another thing. Done. Um, uh oh. So, Maria in Wales would like to know if the way that you turned the car. 
Would that be the same way that you would turn a banana if you're turning fruit? Not as easily. Um, never thought about it for bananas. Some of the guys I know that used to make bananas used to actually do them as a, a round, almost like a bowl blank. And then having turned, they would put the face sets on, then cut them and shape the ends in. So the old-fashioned way, and I haven't made bananas for years, but it's not cost-effective, was to turn it like a bowl. You do the face sets, different flats to give the shape of the banana. You cut it in half and you shape the ends in. All right? You might be able to do it, but it's a hell of a lot of moving off centre to get that shape. And bananas got to have a certain amount of curve to meet EU regulations as well. <laughs> ben? Okay. Um, the hole saw, was that a 60 mil? This one, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Who noticed that was very observant? 60 and 38 mil. Put three bad luck. So, I've done, so it gives me about a 57 mil wheel for the back and 35 for the front because you lose about a mil and a half off the thickness of the hole saw. So the whole saws are measured here. So very good. Yes, 60 and 38. But that's not critical. You might want full wheels the same size. Or you might want my rat rod with pumped up wheels on the back. And Okay, so what we're doing, we're doing the wheel. So we want to drill. We're going to do the axis. Now, or the axle. Now, first thing I'm going to do, Ben, let's just go back to things with tail stock. Now, weld it back. This doesn't locate. It's important you get this to locate, or it's going to wobble about. This has an extended flange that engineers would have for milling machines, engineering lathes, loads of stuff. So you can knock it in and out. This is hardened. You can cut it off with an angle grinder if you really want, but it does mean this is longer than what I've just taken out. The stub will come down longer. So therefore, if I put it into the tailstock, I need to make sure that I wind the barrel forward enough so it grips it and secures it. Okay? Done. Um, sorry. Uh, Robert would like to know, um, could you make the wheels on a pillar drill? You can, but you're going to get that. Now, the problem with using the hole saw on the pillar drill is the fact that you get that wobble off the center. If you look at how these are fixed on, they screw into the center hole with an arbor that screws in. The two metal pins locate. And these rattle about a little bit. I hate the fact they rattle about because it's not dead accurate. So that's one of my dilemmas with using this. It's why I did them on the lathe with this, because I find it more accurate to secure it in the chuck and hold it. Okay. All right, Ben. Okay, good. So we put our plywood disc into the chuck jaws. So I can use the same jaws, hold that. I've got the fluffy breakout edge nearest me at the moment. Jason Breach A will skew, okay? We're going to use the long point just to find the middle. Small dot. And this then goes back to the things we covered last week about lining up your lathe centre with this. Quite important. Now, by doing that dot, that's a bit like an engineer would do a centre drill. It's guiding this drill in. Now, this is an 8 mil lip and spur drill. So it has a raised centre. This is a woodwork drill. It'll cut this nicely. Plywood does tend to bung the surface. You get the glue and the resin, the multi-layer. So I need to be patient when I drill that. Pull it back. Let's see what we have. We have our hole all the way through. All right. Going to take that off. Going to take the chuck off. Going to use different jaws in a minute. So we'll take that out. Put them back on the wall. That's on that chuck hub. Bottle stopper arbor. Okay. Has a bolt. Now, this is done really so you can turn bottle stoppers. Now, from memory, it's an M8 bolt. I put that in there. Give it a tap. Make sure you tap it in with something. A mallet or a block of wood will be great. You want it to stay in there. A Morse taper by itself won't hold that. Oh, what wheel should we go with? How much pump up do we want? Let's go with that. So on here I've got, and we'll relate this if you like to what I've got over here. On there, that there. Ooh. So on my wheels, a smaller centre one. So I've got a washer that fits on there. Bigger one there. I can go through there. I've got another one which is now down on the floor, which is the one we're going to want in a minute probably. So I can vary the size of the centre hub bit by changing the washer. So small wheel we're going to put out of the way. 
I want the largest washer, M8 bolt, a piece of wood that way round. Screw it on. The front of the wheel, I want to see on the car, facing outwards, that way. Okay. Don't need to tighten this with an Allen key, just hand tight is plenty enough. Something to shape it with. Now the plywood's quite abrasive, so I'm going to go with my round nose scraper. That's really nice on there. Come around the back edge. Curve, I've got to clean up the centre bit. Check our profile, that looks good. Then we're going to come around, we'll have a look on camera too, I think, Ben. Let's move that back. We've got that washer. I can cut down this side of it. Take my wheel shape. Blend that in. Now, the reason for using the round nose scraper, like I said, the abrasive or the timber, the plywood's quite abrasive. So it's nicer just to take the heavy bit off. Look at this, look, lovely shaving off of here. So we've got our wheel shape. Got to quickly turn the extractor on, do a little bit of sanding on that. So a 240 grip should be fine enough for this. Undo it by hand, take it off. So this has got an eight mil hole, so I can use eight mil dowel. Push that out. And screw this. Quick and easy way to make a nice wheel. We can have vary the center. Now I might do if we get time. I've got another wheel to try and show you before we finish. Knock out bar. Put that back there. So that bottle stopper rubber. And we've got to make the axle supports for the car. So we're going to go with a set of chuck jaws. These are the small O'Donnell jaws. Now my axles are... Well, these are the axle supports. Two bits of 16 mil dowel, 58 mil and 48 mil long. I've cut them to different lengths. You, can, again, can vary the lengths as much as you want. So this one, in this case, pushes the wheels out. So it's wider on the back, closer together a little bit on the front. But I need a little bit of spacing so it clears the headlights because wheels rubbing the headlights don't work. Believe me. So... Already done one. So this one we're going to do. So this is, I think, 48 mil. So we want our chuck key. In the middle of those McDonald's jaws. Tighten it down. Now the dowel makes it quick and easy to do. So we can do pinpoint the middle. Again, back to that skew chisel. We want the drill chuck. Back in the tail stock. And again, if you're going to do a batch of these, you could do more than one car at a time. So you'd work for a number of these, set it up, repeat it. Low speed, slow. So we said about that with the biometal hole saw. Again, with this, it can be worth running it slower. You're more in control. My left hand's holding the drill chuck, making sure nothing's going to spin or slip. Now, haven't gone all the way through. That's deliberate. I want to turn it around. I want to get this to line up nicely from both ends. In reality, yes, it should. But for the sake of, it can be so much nicer just to do this bit. Seems a bit more playing about. What I've learned over the years, I want things to line up. Something that might take 30 seconds longer can be better to do. There's our hole, bring that back. Again, we're holding the drill shut. Now, 
Now, for the main axis, for axle for the lathe, we've got 8 mil dowel. It's a little bit tight on there. So depending on what you find is tightness, you might, and I'm going to do it for this, have to ream these out. So this is 8.5 mil. Now this is a normal, what I would class as engineer's type drill with a 30 degree angle, whatever they have on the tip. No lip and spur, so more difficult to start accurately to do what we're drilling. So I've used the lip and spur one to do the heavy work. This one, just to ream that hole out. And again, we can go from there. This I can probably go all the way up through. This is taking half a mil out. And Ben, if it starts to make a funny noise, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm gonna stop it so it doesn't scream too much. Take the drill out. Bring the barrel back on the tailstock a little bit. Hurts your elbow when you catch it. So that's done there. Take our speed up. I found a large flat surface on the end of these. Created a lot of friction. So I found by adding a little bit of curve on it, so dome the end, help things glide nicely. A little bit 240 shouldn't need a lot of sanding. Take it out, turn it round. Yeah, and John or George, we've got to give me a little bit of clearance to get in there nicely. So they take my hand away from the chuck. Better access, if you like. So just sound those curves in. So we have two axle supports. They should, and I know we've got to play around with our car body a little bit. Push it into oh, the body in there. Right, that looks good. Now I love the fact I get this little bit of round shaping underneath. Um, other cars I've looked at online, they have the holes drilled halfway up the body because if it's too low, the wheels rub. So it's like, okay, it's quite nice to make that a little bit different. That'd be, probably be all right. The problem of making a kit car and measure what you've already done. All right, so I'm going to put that out of the way for a minute. So we've got our wheels. Ooh. Now, when I started with this, let's just have a quick idea. Let's see if I've got a short bit of 8 mil. I'm going to put a wheel on. And the 8 mil dowel does ugh, fit the wheel nicely. So there's our wheel on there. Okay. I think then someone came home and said, can you put some headlights on it? All right, so Ben, let's have a look up. I can't even go that way. So, make these. So, I've done one. So, we're going to make the other headlight. So, that starts off 16 mil dowel again. The dowel's just quick and easy to use. Haven't got to turn something down onto that size. You can do so if you like. But from the point of view in here, it makes it so much quicker to do little projects. I want to feed this in. What have I got there? Just trying to think. I've got short of it. This bit's a bit, a bit longer. Let out the chuck the better. Great feeding tool. Again, got to make sure got enough room on the tailstock end so I don't catch my elbow. Just going to do a little bit of light on here. Just so I can see what's going on. Just looking at what I've got to try and match in. Slight curve on the front. Light touches with this. I don't want too much, so we're almost done the there's a ring edge around the front, which would have been that polished chrome much that these guys had.
want to set our lamp now. So the dividers, I can set up just over that is, to bring it back a little bit to what I've already got. That makes sense. I think you can see what I'm doing there. Turn that off. We'll give. Rest it on the end. Engage the point. So I've got an extra way of measuring that out. Parting tool. About halfway. Beading tool. We can roll that. I don't know, bead. A quick look, compare. going to use four mil drill but for this it's not too bad it's about the size i can get away with i can lock the spindle but i'm going to hold the check I'm trying to save a little bit of time check where i am i have got a drilling device for the car body it's more accurate again lip and spur drill i'm going to go in a little bit more we've got a bit careful on flexing on the center, let's put the drill back down on the floor so it can't fall off anywhere. So we've got our little hole, which is gonna take a bit of dowel. Four mil dowel, good. Carefully part it off. Uh, okay, you can just see a stub. A bit annoying at times. Um, we could go with a little sander. Or you make your little chuck. So, piece of 20 mil dowel, 8 mil hole for the middle. I've used this for a couple of things. And I've got a saw cut done by hand. It's a Japanese hand saw to put down that cut so it goes all the way down through line the cut line up with the open section of the chuck jewels push it in as far as i dare go put my headlight in if i can get it in there it seems a bit that's good clamp it up so there's our little chuck i can now get into here get to the back We can even sand all of that. That works nicely. So I'll take them back out. It's one headlight. Great little way of holding it. So you can make up your own little holders to do some of those fragile things. With it being timber, hitting timber doesn't damage it. Ooh, okay. How many of these are you going to make them, Ben? Try and remember how I made it now. So we're gonna make the head. I put in with a little cap. I was trying to figure out how to do a helmet nicely, but I think we'll just do the cap. Need to clean that off. We want the eight mil drill. The drill chuck. Slowly come up. Speed again, just taking down. So we've done that. Centre point to make sure we've got a bit of accuracy. Got in 
No more than five mil, just enough. Try and get nice and close into the chuck jewels. Ooh, how big do we need to be? No, we're not first started doing the head. It's kind of, oh, that looks too big, too heavy. A bit more. So, we're feeding tool. Roll it through there. Over, that's good. Ring calipers, eight mil. So we're setting those up to the diameter. So use the shank on the drill. I've got enough room to get in here, I think so. Just tight, nearly there. Just gonna square that up. Check where we are. There we go. Just. Japanese saw. We'll cut that off. Put it somewhere safe because there's nothing worse than crawling around the floor now for 20 minutes because you've dropped it and you can't remember where it landed. Uh... Oh, Ben, I've got to check something now, okay? Just, okay, right. Got to do that magical bit. Um, you, become, you become a distraction, see, Ben? This is the problem. Okay. Call them. Um, so, a question from Lawrence. Um, are we going to make these drawings for this project available? I'm going to do the drawing I've got there. Mm -hmm. We've kind of said, but you've got the measurements of the layouts for the drill bits and everything. The other thing, while we're talking about it, then... I've numbered. That's weird because I, I can't count. I, I can't count. <laughs> um, so centers are numbered next to the drawing here. So this says one, four, and six. For some reason, I missed number five out. I don't know why. Maybe it looks too much like an S. So there, there is a reason. This side says one, two, and three in the middle. Then four is lower, six is at the top, three, two. So it relates to your number position. So when we moved off center on the tailstock end, it was one, two, and three. So three and two. When we did the center point, we've got four there, and we came off four one side and six the other so to do the cockpit area in the back of the car. So it does relate. We can put that on. Ben said you can scan that and we'll figure out how. All right. Come on then, because I've got to do a difficult bit now. Is that it? Right, okay. We're going to do the hat. So we're going to use the same jaws. If you've got newer chuck, you'll find there is a lock screw underneath that you have to turn the chuck over and undo a screw in here. All right. If you want to do what I'm going to do now. So you need to take that screw out. The jaws won't come out freely, but I can wind them right out. Each jaw is numbered three. Each mounting jaw is numbered on our chuck number three. I want one and two. The one with the lock bolt in is number four. There's the hole. There's a little bolt you need to take out. There'll be an Allen key. You can take it out. Um, it's there to stop you overextending the jaws, so it's a good thing to put back in place. Number two. If I turn the scroll and I turn the key now, so I'm looking at it clockwise, I can see the scroll go around inside the chuck body. I want to find the start point. There it is. Down in there. Put it in. Come around to here. Now I've got jaw number one in my hands. I'm going to find the scroll point this side. It is there. So two went in before one. The, the scroll underneath, they are different locations is the best way I can describe it. So now we pulled that off centre fractionally. Not a lot on this. When you check in or set everything up, check where it's going to be. Check it clear, turn it by hand, take the lathe speed down. So have you got manual variable or a lever, drop it down before you do this stage, start the lathe, increase it, belt change, look at what you've got, might drop it down. You're not doing too big a turning on this. So we want to make our bit for in here. Lathe speed on. So you can see that moves off centre fractionally. Underside of the, the cap, and this is the cap for it, I can take the speed up, get a little bit of vibration there, so that's as high as I can go. Got 
got to bring that down. I've got a stub on the end. Let's lose that. I want to get down to eight mil. So I'll fit inside what we've already done. A bit like that. That's good. Good. Go off. We'll come down to a circle now. Right, a bit of material. Have a quick look because I need to move things along just a little bit. I don't want to fall off the end of the toe rest. So I need to make sure. Right, let me just do this cut bend then. We're... You could do this in two parts if you didn't want to do the offset. I'm just going to sand that rim, so I'm going to take the speed right down and sand that in there. Ben? So, um, quite, uh, Frederick would just like you to um, just recap on where the jaw positions were, what jaw went in what <laughs> slot. So, all right, I'll take it back out in a minute, but in reality, I put number two jaw in before number one. If you take them out and the scroll points underneath are all different, they vary. So, the start of this one, which is number four, is further back. So, right, if I go that way, so they are slightly different. Number one will be nearer the front a lot more. So, by putting them out a sequence, you can move things off center. So, it makes a little bit of thinking about, and you need to practice a little bit. I started off with four and one, too much off center. Okay, I'm going to get right forward into there. I'm going to roll it. Now I've got parting tool. I was going to get the beading tool, but we've got this now. Let's see how far around we can go. To there. And get the hat from round a bit more. So I can use the side of the tool. Right into that corner. I've got a mark. I can see a tiny line. Good. Want a bit more room in there. So in other words, what I'm getting at is my feeding tool. A bit of fat. I'll run the risk. I'm going to clip the chuck jaws. That's better. Again, if you sound this, go careful now because you've got those jaws out of sequence. Slow speed is better. You'll know if you're going too fast, you get a lot more vibration. That looks okay. I got enough, too much whip to get in there with that. I think I've got enough to hold this in a second. So I'm going to cut it off with the saw. I was tempted to do it with the chisel, but previous question we had anyway related to this. So we're going to take it back out. Unwind, turn the key anti-clockwise. Go careful, I've got the jaws level. So number two, number one. Number two was the one I put in first time last time. So I moved it off centre more. Let's have a look at one and four, I think. So Ben, we said about right there. Let's have a look, bring them in. Can you see the difference in that scroll point where they start? Four is the one with the hole over here. A lot further back where that scroll point is here, that ridge. Number one, a lot further forward. I could probably show you that there. If I can get it in the right position. Ooh, difficult to see. Okay, but they're quite different. Our jaws and on the chuck bodies on the newer ones, one to four, we label it anti-clockwise. So number one is there. Jaw number one, mount it on number one is the best scenario. On the start, drop it in. Two. Make sure it locates, turn it around, I look for the scroll point on number three, find the jaw, number three, number four, again, turn it around, find the start, get to there. If you take them out like that, take everything into the centre and check they meet. That's paramount. If they don't meet, investigate. 
Right, I want to turn the top of my hat just a little bit, bit off shape. So I'm going to go back to that little holder. Twenty move there for that slot in it. Get that there. Ben, I thought you got up out your chair ready to catch it. You, you, to, to, you, know, you play cricket for England at all? Oh, hang on, we're not going down the line. I might have friends in Australia watching this. So I nearly got the top of the hat done. Nicely curved in. Now I've got to find is the rest of the head we did. There it is. Ugh. So we have, I don't know where it's going to show, our oh, funny head. Oh, okay, Ben, you're going to do that one, are you? All right, okay. So off centre, we're a brim. That looks okay. Give something to Ben to do some biography with next week. Look. Right, okay. Let's have a quick look. So we stood... The Dell material for the axis we can use eight mil Dell all the way through. All right, can we go that far, Ben? All right, so I can pass the Dell through there. We know we can load a wheel. You'd have to work out your lumps, they can obviously be glued on. I think I can probably manage to get one on the other side. There, uh, they're looking quite good. Let's see if we can do last little bits then. Don't know if I can get these out. Oh. Now I'm trying to pull out those two pins. That one fits tight. Just got to push them out over just a little bit more. So what I want to do is get the axle out or that support pin out. That's it without putting the other one back in. So um, just to Lawrence, um, we will get those, um, we'll get that printed off or, or scanned in and I'll put that in the comments. Um, Mark Taylor's asking if there is a steady rest available um, to fit the AC355. A what rest? Uh, a steady rest. A steady rest. So a centre steady. I'd need to check. So if you're after something where you're making something longer and you want to try and support it, I have to have a look. Um, and that would involve, obviously, something that will go on. I know we've just got something somewhere I've seen a new steady just coming in, so I will chase it and have a look for you. Okay. Where were we? Back to there. Last couple of bits. And the most of you guys are pretty good at this. You, you'll be able to... Bit of pressure. We'll drill. I'll put the headlights in, so I want an idea where they're going to be. Oop, slip with the pencil there. That wasn't helpful. That's centre. So what I've done, drawn a pencil line on the body there, coming round. I've got a centre line, which I can relate up to the scratch line on the front where we've got the initial point. Okay. Now, the good thing is if I... I watch Ben when I'm trying to explain this. He nods so they try to make sense to him. Then hopefully everyone understands. That's great. Makes me feel better. On the banjo, I've got a drilling bar. So I've turned. This relates to the stop point up to the centre point at the lake. So I can drop this into the banjo and it will go down to centre for me. Okay, occasionally I will do them and have a Jubilee clip. We have a four mil hole in here. Bring it forward. Got to take a little bit, drill bit out of the drill chuck. I just want the tip to come forward for a minute. Because first thing I want to do is line up with my pencil line. Okay, good. How far around do we want to be? Need to come back just a tidy bit on the drill. I'm not trying to have too much of the drill out the front because I know we're being an oval shape. I run the risk of catching it there. Now, do you have an index facility? 
you can obviously count it. Now, Colwyn's got his tape thing that you've seen him use a few times. So I've got one there. So I've got a line where the pencil is here. You could easily draw this out. So some of you are going to say, couldn't we just do uh, set dividers? All right. So you could go index. Other way. Because I know some of you are going to say, this is going to be fiddly, isn't it? So how about you set, a, set a dividers up? We don't all have flashlights with nice indexing. So we have one there. One there. Now look what I do. Let's be able to see it. Got to come in a tiny little bit. Find my mark. Oh, I've slipped over that way. I don't want to be there. One there. That's good. Bring it around. There we are. About there. A lot of playing around for two little holes, wouldn't it? So we have those drilled. Go deep enough, just about. Body-wise, well, we've got this set up. And this is really the last bit, I suppose. And then we can finish off the car. And then you guys, I think, will figure out how you assemble it. Something for where your cockpit driver goes. Again, I can use my centre line on the tail stop. How deep do I want to be? I'm looking at how much I've got open on the drill on the back of my drilling support. The drill that needs a shirt and then. That's a bit better. Okay. Oh. So we know our head can sit in there. All right. So we know that will go in. We have our two holes for our spotlights that are going on our four mil dale. They will go in. So that's done. Good. To rest. Bow gouge. Have I got enough room to get in here? So we're back on Paolo Centre now, front to back, where we started. You know, there's an idea behind this, Ben, you know. Can you go number one for me? I know we're, we're, we're cutting time now, aren't we? Now I'm struggling here to get in down here. My body stents. I've got to get the bulge out here, get the casting of the live headstock. Comes quite problematic to get in there nice. I've got to line up the bevel angle, the bulge out on its side. I could go with a skew. Okay. Uh, how about we turn it around? Do you bet we're using ring centers? I can do that. I can come down to here. I'm on there. Uh, have the handle the correct side of my body because I'm naturally right-handed. Make my life so much easier. So one of the joys of using those ring centers, get right into there. I can move things about, get more access. So I need to just knock that out. Tail stock M1, you can probably cut off. I want set of jaws just back in here. Had, oh, how much we got to come off there? A little bit there. Pad sander, do you fact this has got the longer mounting jaws on this chuck? I can get that into the centre. I'd like to use my collet chuck, but I forgot to bring it in. Little junior chuck. 
so we can then easily sound that stabbing. Again, just want to keep the shape, a little bit of curve, it's not dead flat. Better. Just really taking off that drive centre mark, blend it together. I don't want any little marks in the centre, so drive pins you want to lose. I think that's something like a 120 grip, so quite heavy. 241, just to the front. We've got the pencil line of where something's there. Let's lose that as well. Save me hand sanding it. Okay. It's not going to be totally assembled. We're going to need access to do that, Jason. Come on. But again, the big wheel. Big wheel there. Small wheel, head will fit, it's a bit tight, but it'll fit. Headlights I need to cut in a second. Um, where can we go, Ben Ben? Which one do you want? I can, if I actually did, oh, look. Okay, so you've got your car, you can see we're building something, and it's all turned. I love the fact of my major thing I love about this, if I get that dowel through, how these stick out the bottom. They actually look quite beautiful. They give you quite a nice shape here to something that's kind of, you could actually turn a bit more detail on them so they, they look a bit more carry, if you like. You don't have to have, as we said when we started this, any particular size wheel. You might want small wheels. All right? So there are ways of adapting this. doesn't have to be set in stone that you make anything there. Only other thing I did, took a bit longer. Um, three, I think, Ben. I can rest my hand on the shot. So I did a wheel, and I drilled the centre out with a 20 mil Forstner. Yeah. So this is when it's mounted in the chuck. Then I drilled the 8 mil hole. I then turned a button stub. I put a slight recess in where my fingertip is here, because this is really tight to push in there. And then it spins. So that could be glued on. That gives you a nice hub in the center as well. So there are, there's more than one way of making up this wheel, depending on what you want to do. I quite like the aspect of having the axle goes all the way through. They're both going to spin at the same time. Some of you mechanics are probably going to tell me that's wrong. I know. All right. Wow. Okay. You're right then, Ben. Any questions from any of you guys? Um, I have got a question we had to follow up from last week. The... 370 load, which is the big, long craft load we do, about the hand wheel on the back edge. Now, better look. We used to sell a metal hand wheel for the 900 950 that we did 15, 20 years ago. The problem is, the minute you fitted the hand wheel because it's screwed into a thread, you can't knock your drive centers in and out. So if you're using it regularly to do spindle work and faceplate work, it becomes more problematic because you screw the hand wheel on, you've got to take it off just to use a knockout bar. There is a thread in it, but it's not metric, All right? So it could be possible you make up your own hand wheel, which could be a turn wooden one with a bolt going through, loading into that thread on the end. But I don't know what thread it is. I know it's nearly half inch, but it's not M12. So that will need a little bit of research. But the minute you fit it on there, you've got to struggle then to get the centered out of the lathe because you have no way of using the knockout bar. All right, so just think about that. Um, if you've got problems getting your chuck on and off, use that spanner to lock the spindle or the spindle lock pin, then screw your chuck on. It's lovely on here to be able to turn your hand round with hand wheel. I use the back of the chuck. We occasionally get asked, is it safe to touch the chuck? Me and Colwyn regularly stop the chuck with our hand down here. We always come on the back. We know where the jaws are here that protrude out the front. We know where they're going to be. So keep your fingers away from that, this bit here. So I always touch the chuck if I'm there. So if I'm turning over by hand, I would do that. Don't tend to be at the top. Okay. Hopefully that's all right then, Ben. I don't know if you've got any other questions. I think they've bored them all now. So you've got a car you can all go make. 
how much more fun can you have? We'll, we'll look at it. I'd love to see your pictures if you make them. All right. So we've got more of this stuff for you next week, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Thanks for joining us.